In this lesson, I want to talk a little bit about how to use disk utility. In order to do that, I'm going to plug a USB drive into the USB port of my uh, computer, and it will show up here on the right side of my desktop. It's a Seagate drive. There it is. Now, if yours doesn't show up when you plug it in, make sure that in the Finder menu, which is really called the Application menu, if we're going to be particular, right? that you're showing up hard drives and external disks. All of these have check marks on them, and then that disk will show up. Let's talk about disk utility now. You can go in the Finder to the Go menu and select Utilities. In the Utilities folder, you will find a program called Disk Utility. In the past, what we've talked about with Disk Utility is selecting a drive and repairing the permissions. This is something you should be doing once a week, once a month, you know, at some interval that's comfortable for you. It'll, it'll do good things for your computer, and you can actually notice it if it's been a while since you've done it. Well, in Disk Utility, this drive also shows up, but there's a bunch of stuff that we can do with it. We can erase the drive. We can partition the drive, which is similar to erasing. You can put it into a RAID, or you can restore what was previously on the drive from a backup. We've talked about these things in first aid, repairing the disk and repairing permissions. But I want to talk about these two items, erasing a disk and partitioning a disk. Now this drive, this disk drive that I've used, is the same drive that I've used to do a backup on this computer previously. I used this drive in the uh, backup lessons here at Acularian.com, and I'll put a little link to that lesson in the notes here. When you're erasing a drive, there's a couple things that you can choose here in the format. Most of these you will not want to use just this first one, Mac OS Extended Journaled. You don't want to do encrypted. You don't want to do case sensitive. You don't want to do case sensitive journal encrypted. All right. If you will be using the drive that you are going to format on a PC, a Windows machine, choose one of these two formats, preferably this one, MS-DOS FAT. What that does, it erases the drive and it formats it so that the Windows machine can recognize it and use it. Windows machines don't recognize and can't use Macintosh formatted drives or disks, okay? So you've got to format disks that are going to go back and forth with this MS-DOS format. Macintoshes for years have been able to read Windows formatted disks. So if you're going to go back and forth, use this. You can title the disk once you've done that you can give it a name a backup some kind of thing whatever you want and then you would click the erase button are you sure you want to do this not right yet we don't I want to point out something else while this is the disk drive this is the hardware of the disk this is the volume the the uh, the guts, the technical, the digital aspects of the drive. And you can see it's a one terabyte drive, right? You can have some different options down here, like erase this free space. And what this does is it writes ones and zeros, I, I, probably ones. Does it say here? It doesn't say exactly what it's going to write. Probably a series of ones over every sector of the drive, making it nearly impossible to do any kind of data recovery on that drive. If you're getting rid of your computer and you're not going to use the hard drive anymore, you store it yourself. It's a great backup. Or if you don't want to use that drive anymore, a hammer. That works great. <laughs> okay, you take it out, you put it to the hammer. Well, in here also you have the same types of selections when you erase the drive. Erasing the drive, erasing the volume, not a lot of difference. You can do either one. Now partitioning a drive is a little bit different because you can have more than one partition on a drive. You could have two or three partitions, four, five, whatever. And each of these partitions you can actually resize to be whatever size you'd want to do that. Why would you want to do this? Uh, a little bit of debate here on this issue. 
Partitioning a drive allows it to show up on the desktop as two, three, four, whatever you've selected here, different drives. And there can be an argument made that you could put all of your, say, system files on one partition and then all of your data files on another partition. I don't like partitions. I'm not fond of them. And the reason being, when I step up and I look at my desktop out here, let's just hide everything else. If I have one hard drive, one disk drive connected to my computer, whether it's a Seagate, a thumb drive, big, a big monstrous hard drive, I want to see that as one physical device. The notion of busting this out into separate partitions for me becomes a little bit confusing because when I look at things out here on the desktop, I see two drives. I look around the back of the computer or the side of its laptop and I wonder, hey, where's the other drive? What's going on? And it stays a bit of a mystery. You got to dive in here and take a look at where the partitions are actually existing. And it becomes a bit of a problem. So whenever I'm partitioning a drive, I like to do just one partition and I give it a name that's appropriate. I use Mac Extended Journaled always. And as you're partitioning a drive, let's say you've just bought a new one, this is a really important button. Most of us are on these newer Macintoshes now, and you'll want to select this GUID partition table. This allows you to completely boot your Macintosh from that partition. Uh, really important because you want to be able to boot your Mac should it crash from, say, a carbon copy cloner or a super duper backup. These two pieces of software, again, I'll put links to them here in the notes. Um, allow you to make an exact clone of your hard drive. Really important. What that means is you can be back up to work instantly instead of having to completely recover your hard drive from, say, a time machine backup. So having this ability to back up is really great. Now, if you've got an older Macintosh, you're going to want to use this Apple partition map. It's for the power PC. Most of us don't have those anymore, so I'd probably encourage you to be up here using 10.4 or later, that's the, that's the uh, caveats there. And then you would simply click apply. It's going to ask you a second time, are you sure you want to do this? And if you say partition, it will go ahead and partition the drive and make it as if it is brand new, ready to go, out of the box. And in fact, uh, Time Machine will probably even ask you, after it remounts on the desktop, if you want to use that drive as your Time Machine backup. This is important to know because as we purchase drives for, uh, from wherever, Best Buy or Apple or whoever, when you purchase a drive, you're going to come home, you're going to plug it into your computer, you want to be able to know that that, that drive is going to work on your Mac, on your PC, whatever your needs are, and you're going to want to know that it's formatted properly for a Mac to be used as a, as a backup drive. When you purchase a drive, normally, out of the box, they're going to be set up as a Windows drive. And if you're on a Mac, you probably don't want that. It's okay, but I kind of prefer having my Macintosh talk to the Macintosh formatted style of disk. Well, that's our tutorial on how to use disk utility. There are tons of quick tips and tutorials available at acularian.com. So come visit us and check them out.